loans and insurance deals. The state attorney general had argued if everyday Americans can't exaggerate the values of their properties, why should the Trumps? One property, the Trump Tower penthouse, Trump documents claimed it was 30,000 square feet. Property records show it's actually 10,900 square feet. Mar-a-Lago, Trump said it was worth up to 600 million. Appraisers in Florida put it at 27 million, just a fraction of Trump's claim. Trump's oldest sons, Don Jr. and Eric, fined $4 million each, both banned from doing business in New York for two years. Their father banned from business for... ...pulling strikes at the heart of Donald Trump's image, carefully crafted for decades. The former president fined a staggering $355 million and banned from doing business for three years in New York, the city where he built his fortune and made his name. The judge determining Trump flagrantly overvalued his signature properties in order to get favorable bank loans and insurance rates, things everyday Americans would never get away with. Donald Trump may have authored the art of the deal, but he perfected the art of the steal. Today, the court once again ruled in our favor and in favor of every hardworking American who plays by the rules. The most high-profile examples of fraud, the Trump Tower penthouse. The Trump Organization inflated its value by some $200 million, declaring it was 30,000 square feet. But Trump signed a document certifying it's a third that size, 11,000 square feet. And while Trump claimed his Mar-a-Lago resort was worth up to $600 million, its true assessed value was no more than $27 million. Today, Judge Arthur and Gorin writing Trump's complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological calling Trump incapable of admitting the error of his ways. The former president attended 10 days of the trial. This trial is ridiculous. And on the witness stand, he attacked Judge Ngorin to his face, complaining, this is a very unfair trial. I hope the public is watching. In his ruling today, the judge knocked Trump's testimony for long, irrelevant speeches, adding his refusal to answer the questions directly, or in some cases at all, severely compromised his credibility. The judge today also punishing Trump's two eldest sons, Eric and Don Jr., who Trump entrusted with the company when he was president. Both brothers had testified all they did was sign documents their accountants prepared, insisting they didn't check what was actually in them. Whoever was bringing me a document, if it was more accounting, it was probably from accounting. If it was more legal, it would be from legal. And I'd, hey, like, are we okay signing this document? Do you believe it to be honest and accurate? And if they were okay with it, they'd have much more knowledge than I'd ever be able to amass, and so I would sign it. Eric Trump testifying, I don't think I'd be so nitty gritty that I focused on details like this. This is just not what an executive at my level focuses on. But Judge Ngorin didn't buy it, fining Trump's sons $4 million each and banning them from doing business in New York for two years, declaring that without a significant penalty, Trump and his sons would be likely to continue their fraudulent ways. Moments ago, Trump lashing out. It's a very sad day for in my opinion, the country. A crooked New York state judge just ruled that I have to pay a fine of $355 million for having built a perfect company. Uh, great cash, 